It's beginning to look a lot like peak season. Welcome back to the Weather Center, everybody. I apologize for that rather rough little jingle right there, but you know what? I had to hook you on in for today's latest tropical update. So thank you so much for taking some time out of your hump day. Wednesday, today is September 17th, 2025, 17 days deep into the month of September. The climatological peak of the hurricane season came and went back on the 10th per all of our calendars. It's starting to look a little more like September out there, especially once we get to the National Hurricane Center's homepage. Before we get started, the usual housekeeping. If you are brand new to the channel, it would mean the world to all of us as a part of the Weather Center community. If you kindly consider hitting the subscribe button, let's give that like button a little nudge and smash that hype button if it is still available for the channel. We got to get the views back up. We're kind of losing traction just like the hurricane season has. Now that I'm back up to about 95% health, the hurricane season is finally starting to misbehave a little bit. We got to get the momentum back on our side, and I'm counting on you all to do it. So nudge the like button, smash the hype button, and let me know in the comments where you're tuning in from. Feel free to hello. Feel free to say hello. Let me know what the weather is like in your neck of the woods. Let me know what your thoughts are on what today's presentation has in store. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get you over to National Hurricane Center's homepage and what happened. So at first, I thought this afternoon's 2 o'clock TWO, Tropical Weather Outlook, somebody accidentally copied and pasted the wrong graphic. We also have, before we get into those two overlapping yellow blips, Tropical Storm Gabrielle officially entered the fray earlier this morning. As of the 11 o'clock advisory, Tropical Depression number 7 was upgraded to our 7th named storm of the season. Gabrielle, Gabby is out there fighting the good fight going toe to toe with an upper level low that has yanked the low level circulation well to the north of a latitude that should affect the lesser Antilles. We're going to dodge that bullet, so there really shouldn't be many, if any at all, impacts felt for our Leeward Island friends down there, the U.S. British Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. You can see as of 5 o'clock, we are now up to max sustained winds of 50 miles an hour in the center of circulation. The central pressure has deepened by one millibar over the last six to eight hours, and we have drastically slowed down the forward progress. Earlier this morning, when the first upgrade advisory came out, this thing was cranking off towards the north and northwest, all thanks to the merging effect, the miniature Fujiwara effect we had with an upper level low to its immediate north. The two features were running in tandem with one another, more or less, and the upper low to the north won the battle, and these two have more or less become one. Here's a look at the latest cone forecast. This is the latest as of 5 o'clock. This just released about 40 minutes ago upon my shooting this video. And you can see that Hurricane Center is still confident we will get at least a Category 1 hurricane out of this. Pardon my voice for a second. Like I said, 95%, not 100% just yet. But National Hurricane Center is still convinced we will get at least a Category 1 hurricane out of this. And I think that's a very realistic expectation. A lot of our computer models have been very back and forth with this though the gfs for example all of a sudden writes this puppy off it takes it westward as a tropical storm and then begins to diminish it until maybe seven eight nine days into the future we find that favorable pocket just a localized pocket for this thing to re-intensify and then immediately bounce off the east coast united states force field that we've had in place for an extended period of time and the latest cone here as a matter of fact keeps bermuda out of immediate harm way. This would still likely result in some tropical impacts as we rock into the early periphery of next week, but thankfully we will be on the weaker side of this system, and let's hope we can keep nudging this thing off towards the east as we go through time. Now, Moving over to our Goes East full satellite, let me get myself out of the way. Let's do some doodling, okay? So front and center, one thing I want us to notice here is not anything to do with the MDR, but rather what's going on across the Caribbean and Central America. I'm going to draw a big question mark, and no, I know what you're probably thinking right out of the jump. This is not necessarily the Central American gyre just yet. What I'm really pointing at here is this rapid increase in our shadow 
showers and tropical thunderstorms across the spectrum. Sweeping up into south and central Florida at this point, we've had some pretty good thunderstorm action taking place this afternoon. And then you can also see across Cuba, the Bahamas back down into the Turks and Caicos. Jamaica absolutely bathed in thunderstorms today. Same with the Cayman Islands. And then right on back through pretty much all of Central America from Panama all the way up to El Salvador, Belize, the Yucatan Peninsula, dealing with widespread showers and heavier rainfall. I do think that is an indication that our rising motions are finally starting to move across the board. Notice how much more quiet the eastern Pacific looks now. We have one area that's trying to hold on. I believe this is Mario. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. Feel free to jump in the chat or in the comment section, let me know, because I really haven't been keeping too much track of the Eastern Pacific, so I could be wrong here, but I know that Mario flared back up once again, wahoo, and started to move off towards the west-northwest once again, and you can see how much more quiet the Eastern Pacific Basin has become, whereas now in the Atlantic, yes, we still have a number of upper-level lows. We have one here, one here, one there, and they're coming down just like the wave train is coming off of Africa. This is Gabrielle, and to tell you the truth, this thing is very much so disheveled. It kind of reminds me of prior Nicole back in 2022, which, you know, to tell you the truth, has become a bit of an analog for this season. Not the storm itself, but 2022, and we're going to be watching the Caribbean as we get further into the month of September, and especially through October. We'll talk about that. Rock with me to the end of the video. Then further upstream, this is one area of interest hanging out near the Cabo Verde Islands, and then this very robust tropical wave furthest to the right-hand side of your screen there, that is our third area of interest, or I should say second area of interest, third tropical feature on the board with the potential for development. We also just recently got this since we were without a tropical update yesterday. I didn't get a chance to air this out to you all. This is our latest global tropics hazards map from Climate Prediction Center, kind of echoing the same sentiments from their last update, showing an above 20% chance between September 24th and September 30th for tropical development in the BOC, the BOC, the Bay of Campeche, and then across the MDR. I do find this interesting, though, that they have this corner of the world favored and they're still highlighting the Eastern Pacific for an above 40% shot when we've noticed, just based on the satellite image, we're starting to see the subsidence, the sinking motions prevail for the Eastern Pacific. So I'm not quite sure this is going to cook off the way they have it depicted. What I will say, however, as we scroll down towards the second portion of the chart, the week three time frame, notice that the 20 percentile does expand back into the Western Caribbean, and we see more potential MDR activity. And I want to talk about this for a second. So please don't click away from the video. I'm going to go on a bit of a, a spiel here, and I'll keep it short. But one of my working theories is, since we've struggled in the thermodynamic department, and for those of you unfamiliar with thermodynamics, it all has to deal with temperatures. Temperatures dictate everything on this planet. The temperature of the air, the humidity in the air, the overall moisture, thunderstorms, the lack thereof, clouds, wind, pressure, everything on planet Earth that derives from the weather is all thanks to the unequal heating of the planet's surface. So hear me out. If we've struggled thermodynamically in the stability department through July, August, September, what time of the year are we typically in in the northern hemisphere, the summertime? And when you take into the equation the simplest of Earth's tilt, the 20 some odd degrees of tilt, and where we are in our orbit around the sun, the northern hemisphere from the tropics all the way up to the poles is receiving the bulk of the sunlight. So maybe just like last year, and maybe this is a shot in the dark, folks. It's rooted in science, but I'm coming up with this on the fly, just trying to explain the hurricane season. Maybe late September and especially October will in fact produce a little bit, give us a little more ace and a few more named storms because as we retrograde away from the northern hemisphere summertime, we retrograde into or we transition into fall, we start to see the tilt and the angle of that incoming solar energy drop back back down as we start to approach the southern hemispheric summer so we'll get more direct sunlight into the tropics and we'll start to reduce the amount in the mid latitudes and the poles so in theory it's just a theory 
As we start to reduce the amount of sunlight hitting up north, we should start to see the upper tropospheric temperatures, the temperatures way up there, way high up in the atmosphere, come down, increasing instability. The colder it is above the surface and the warmer it is down at the surface, the more mixing you get. So maybe that's where we have to get in order for this season to finally bust through that stability cap. And I can show you at the end of the video, the long range GFS actually seems to corroborate this a little bit. So maybe your boy isn't out to lunch entirely coming up with a theory on the fly. Now here is I was almost going to say Aaron. Here's Gabrielle up close. You can see we have fully merged with that upper level low, and we're starting to develop a more pronounced center of circulation up and through here. It's very interesting, though, because if I were to slow down the loop ever so slightly and do just a little bit of doodling for you, there's a noticeable spin here now as we complete that hybrid merger of an upper level cold pocket with a low level tropical warm core feature. But then look right here, there's also a little naked swirl down there to the south. So it almost makes you wonder if we really did yank the vorticity, the spin associated with what was our tropical depression in our very healthy invest area overnight, tug it north and now we're starting to see a transition. We've gone from warm core, cold core, hybrid, and now we're going back to tropical storm because this definitely doesn't look tropical at all. That does not look tropical to me. I don't know if you want to jump in the comments and let me know your thoughts, but this does not look tropical whatsoever. Even the convection, the thunderstorms are very badly displaced from the center towards the northeast. So let's, you know, let's give it a little more time. Famous last words for the hurricane season. Here's a quick glance at your intensity guidance. Notice that a lot of the models are in a fair bit of agreement. Slow and steady wins the race in this case. This really won't be an ace grinder, let alone a very impactful or destructive strong hurricane. We kind of oscillate up into category one intensity and then in unanimous agreement minus the HMON all the way up into major hurricane status there. Even our hurricane models keep this fairly tame and I think this is going to be our most likely outcome. We'll have to give it a little time. We've got a lot of westerly shear out ahead of this feature, and we still have to punch through this upper level low, the wave breaking back behind it in the dry air across the tropics. Now, this is where it starts to get a little more interesting. So we'll take you through the afternoon iteration of the European model. The Euro, I think, is finally starting to catch up a little bit with our favorable phasing coming into range. Now, if you notice, the Euro here does strengthen this up to Category 1, possibly Category 2 intensity, before kicking it to the east of Bermuda, up into the mid-latitudes, and then emerges with the jet stream. Now, turn our attention back to the tropics. These are our next two areas of interest. This is one wave there and one wave here. Here comes another crashing of our wave breaking. This is another dry air dump coming down the east side of our Atlantic high pressure. So that is essentially going to erase anything coming off of Africa by the 23rd through the 25th of September. These two waves are expected to win the lottery here. So these are some that we want to pay attention to. And it is very interesting to note that the euro has upticked in the intensity on our second play Layer there. It takes it through the Bahamas, very close to the state of Florida, and then begins to intensify it into a hurricane and then brings it up towards the mid-Atlantic states. Interesting feature. Not really looking at the track here. What I'm focusing on is the fact that the Euro is now catching on to development. Because when we look at the AI model, the AI model also does not give Gabby a high vote of confidence. Notice it isn't until we're deep into the subtropics and beginning to merge with the jet stream does that feature begin to strengthen beyond tropical storm intensity. But then notice what happens with our wave signature down here. It's very weak as it moves through the Lesser Antilles. There's area of interest number two. This is our 0 for 20. This is our 10 for 20 there. Now into the Eastern Caribbean. As you go towards the end of the loop, watch the signature there. It moves up towards the Cayman Islands over Cuba, and then begins to develop in the eastern Gulf. This has been trending, and the reason I point this out is it's been on the model for a couple of days now. It really has been. The reason I didn't air this out on Monday is we didn't have quite a lot of support with it. The artificial intelligence euro was on an island by itself. Naturally, that comes with a very low vote of confidence from me, but it is interesting to see that it's sticking to its guns and holding steady with this almost pseudo-Ian type of solution. And as we all know, the AI models have a lot of climatology built into them, so maybe that's what it's looking at. 
Now, on to the ensembles this is where it gets a little more interesting. As you fast forward the clock, notice we had a little bit of a downtick with Gabrielle. It does show a number of Hurricane members out there, but it takes a long while. This is out till next Tuesday where we finally see this thing really get its act together, and then the speed spread is ridiculous. And then watch as our next wave gets into the Western Caribbean. We start to really see a flaring up of our individual members near the Yucatan Channel, some of which start to lift up into the Eastern Gulf and then recurve back thanks to an East Coast trough. Some try to lag back behind there, and then you can see as we get into the month of October, we're starting to see a little bit more of an active signal through the main development region. So I'm going to be watching this. This has been on my radar for a little while now, but obviously this is well out to the 14, 15 day mark, so take it with a grain of salt. I'm doing the same thing, especially with as slow as September has been to get off the ground. We're just going to wait and see. I don't think we're quite ready just yet. Another thing that I did notice this morning on an Instagram live I did is our DeepMind models, our Google DeepMind AI models, are also starting to sniff out the same thing as the Euro artificial intelligence model. You notice as we go out to about day 10, we've got a pretty solid handful of members in here, both in the Caribbean near Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, Haiti, and Cuba, and then a couple of them that do manage to sneak out of the Caribbean and begin to develop in hot pursuit of Gabrielle. I don't know about that. That. I really don't know about that solution. We would need something developing like you can kind of see in the members there developing as we rock through the Antilles. That would suggest we'll gain some latitude and maybe curve up and out, but we'll have to see. I don't think that's the solution we're going to go with. As you go towards the very tail end of the Deep Mind run, there you have it. You start to see a pretty good ensemble signature for that feature. The same thing with our Gen C artificial intelligence ensembles here. You go to the very tail end of the run, not too shabby. Nothing to really write home about, but definitely something that I will keep a close eye on for all of you at home, because if 2022 is an analog for this season, that would suggest that our warmest waters, which are nestled in to the Caribbean and the Gulf, could actually produce some of our tail end hurricane season systems. We'll have to wait and see. And that's that. That's where we're going to go ahead and close out the video. Thank you so much for tuning in on your Wednesday afternoon or evening, wherever it is you're watching from. Thank you to those of you who have continued to show support, even though things have really dwindled out there in the tropics. I'm still tracking behind the scenes, whether I'm bedridden, sick, working hard, doing whatever behind the scenes. I'm still looking closely and scrutinizing every piece of the moving puzzle out there. We'll see you again Friday for your next tropical weather update. I'm going to keep an eye on everything I broke down in this video, and we'll see. We will see if everything that I would mentioned in terms of my working theory for next month holds true. And I just realized I'm going to very, very fast paced, fast forward through those ensembles so I can show you what I'm talking about. Here we go. I'll show you the long range GFS. Go back to the zero Z, which goes way out in time for all of us. And if you notice, as soon as we cross the threshold into Sept I mean, October, Right about there. This is October 1st. Watch what happens across the tropics. Things really start to bubble up out there, especially closer to home. So we shall wait and see again. Just a theory. Nothing really rooted out there in confidence or any of the statistical data, dynamical data we have, but just got to keep waiting and seeing. It's still a large amount of the hurricane season left to go, and we'll talk all about it here on the Weather Center. But until next time, everyone, this is Weather Center Nazario. Signing out.